years ago, I moved to the city of Dubai, and it was a very exciting prospect. I was about to join a new sustainability movement in a place that is not commonly known for being sustainable, and help green the built environment there. So a warrior, really. And the day I moved to Dubai, my excitement was taken to a whole different level. Basically, I realized the task was huge in front of us. If you've seen, if you've seen be uh, Dubai before, you probably see that it's a very modern city with the best standard of living. People seem happy, more or less. Um, but at the same time, everything is so huge. The roads are massive, they're difficult to walk, there's very little sense of community, there are glass building and greenery and water fountains everywhere, and we are in the desert. There then the indoors were freezing, while the outdoors are very hot, and all these contracts obviously come at a price. You know, it's this kind of development and this kind of growth came uh, with a reliance on fossil fuel energy, with a deep extraction of natural resources like water, etc. And well, if we compare that to the older cities in the desert, we can see that there are quite differences there. You know, these are cities that were built decades ago, maybe 100 years ago, with the principles of, I have some local resources, I have to use them. So different people done different things. In Tunisia and Matmata, for example, people dug holes in the ground to create housing. In other places, like Petra in Jordan, they carved the side of mountains to create beautiful cities. Or simply, they invented the brick, like the cities in, of Yemen, where they were able to build you know, high-rise towers. And regardless of the settlement they decided to use, they had to resolve three main design problems. The first one was, I have to shelter from the elements. Extreme temperatures, wind conditions, dust, solar radiation. I have to also make sure I foster interaction between people and grow this economic activity that can happen in a city. And obviously do all this with a minimum use of resources or the most efficient way, you know, the most efficient way of using resources that are available locally. So they were smart, they came up with ideas. First, they invented intricate pathways that are usually shaded most of the time, so it's more comfortable for, pede for pedestrians. They used um, thick walls that with high thermal mass that keep the space cool during the day and warmer at night when the desert is very cold. They also invented the oldest form of air conditioning systems in the Arabian Peninsula, called the Barjil or the wind tower. And every time they used greenery, they had to use it for a meaningful purpose, like a growing food or creating shade. And these concepts are concepts that we can still use today. We can actually engineer them further, advance them further to get more energy efficiency, more water conservation in our building, more livability. Because at the end of the day, our cities are there not just to be better for the environment, but for people and for economic growth, etc., to be more sustainable. And that's the kind of thinking we're trying to have as sustainability consultants, designers, engineers, architects um, in the region and elsewhere. We're trying to think about how can we do more with less. And the nice thing is, w is that in our region, we're starting to see some good examples, modern examples, that is. Uh, the first one I would like to mention is um, the new progressive uh, sustainable urban pa policies that were developed by the government of Abu Dhabi, they're reshaping the neighborhoods a bit differently. There are neighborhoods now where we can walk easily in the shade, where we have different pocket parks, etc., where people can interact, uh, where we have a, a true sense of community and complete communities where the facilities are closer to us and we can have access to them um, uh, easily. They also develop a program called Estidama for rating the performance of buildings from the worst to the best, and so that they can encourage better performance or environmental performance of these buildings. So we should expect also less use of resources, energy, water, materials, etc. And we started seeing some examples also built. Here, the example of Master City, where uh, all, the ex all the ideas like the wind tower you see there on the left, and the mashrabiya system for windows are being used now in modern sitting, a setting. But they're also using solar energy, they're doing calculations, optimizing the performance. And it's really exciting to see these kind of examples. We're actually on our path to developing better cities, better buildings, better neighborhoods, because it's very important. If we can make it work in the desert, it can work everywhere else. Thank you.
we are in a race. The race is against time. We have to build cities. We need them, but we have to make them in a different way. We need a wave of innovation, not only for our way of life, but also for the planet. The consequences would be enormous if we lose this battle. The world has right now close to a billion cars, and we might double the number of cars on the planet by 2050. We're going to need transportation fuels for those. This has kicked off people looking at a whole range of other alternatives to petroleum in your tank. Sugarcane to ethanol is an incredibly efficient process. You get out about seven times the energy you put into growing the sugarcane. Imagine that you could have one process that could take in sunlight and carbon dioxide and turn it into fuel. And imagine if that didn't involve growing anything at all. The cost of traffic is people's time. It's obviously money. It's fuel wasted. It's an emotional toll. It's a frustration. If there's technology that would allow me to spend less time in the car and spend more time at home, I'd be all for that. If you took a satellite picture of the highway, you can see that there's actually a lot of open space. Maps in the future are going to be able to help people get places either more safely or more efficiently. The vehicles will be intelligent. We will see completely autonomous driven vehicles. Suddenly, mobility becomes a whole other thing. The way we've been building cities lately is unsustainable. We can't go on building them that way. Well, welcome to Mazdar City. It's the world's first carbon neutral city. We are driving in the, in the bowels of Mazdar City in an electric transportation system. It's slightly unnerving to see this for the first time. Where are we going? The whole scale here is based on the human being. It's not based on the motor car. One thing that's very encouraging about Mazdar is it does represent a whole different value system. We're trying to do as much as possible with as little as possible. The payoff is how can everything it's trying to do matter in the rest of the world? Research needs to be done now and by as many people as possible. We have a long way to go, but I'm confident that we'll get there.